officially. It is Discovery Monday and we are testing a new app that I have at the early access on the Thursday, right on time. And that thing is called Unicorn Studio. We talked about it last week on Monday. So what is the Unicorn Studio? Unicorn Studio is some sort of a web JL, I think, design tool that lets you do a lot of really cool shit when it comes to interactivity and or design itself. So I don't know if it has a lot of, as I said, interactivity, but it seems to be the case. If you can have these effects, this is crazy. As I said last time, the creativity and the progress that we've had in the past 15 years on 3D on the browser have been crazy. So when I built my first 3D things, we needed days to render something. And today we need less than a second to have a 3D things rendered properly and not being so intensive on your machine. As I said, the whole landing page has a ton of interactivity a ton of teeny tiny things that behave based on your cursor behavior, mainly cursor position. If that's the only thing, I think I would be okay with it. So let's just jump in and do the usual review. What do we see? What do we not see? What can we expect? First thing, we have the logo on the top left. That makes sense. We have the join the Discord and the feedback on the right. My potentially account thing, but that only contains my email for some reason. A ton of templates. So that's pretty useful if you needed to just see how things have been built. That seems like a good idea to start. This one having a welcome thing, I have a feeling that it's some sort of a tutorial-ish type of project. So we'll go there and then we just have a big ass gray button for a new project starting from blank. So I would love to have a bit of a tutorial section, but once again, because this thing is brand new and I had early access last week, it makes sense that we don't have access to most stuff. Oh shit. Okay, <laughs> gonna not move. Let's see what we have. Hey, wise, we have on the top left, we have our menu, which I think this is called the hero section, which is the name of the project. Our tools, similarly to what we have on Figma, so that's feeling at home. On underneath, we have our layer list with 3D shape with an animation. I can pose animation from there. That's really cool. If I select nothing, the inspector on the other side is changing. If I select something, I have the setups for these things. Things that makes a lot of sense. And here I have the current defined screen size, the play button to see the preview, export remix if that's needed, and then the inspector as said, which contains currently the page setup. So that's pretty simple. We have three elements right here. Oh, control Z doesn't work. That's crazy. We have a text number one, and text number two. Both of these have effect or are supposed to have some effect. We have the interactivity right here, which is giving us the mouse tracking and the 3D axis tilt at 10%. So I'm guessing if I'm going crazy, then I'm getting more crazy stuff, which makes a lot of sense. I tried control Z. The thing is control Z is arc specific and that bring back shit like this and control Z doesn't do anything. I don't mind. It's just, I just need to know that the control D worked though but control Z didn't. We have versions right here, which I don't know what that is in terms of tool and filters. Cool. So I don't know what that thing is. The paintbrush, it, I'm guessing it's probably some sort of a paint tool-ish to just draw things, but I have doubts. Though, this is crazy. So you have adjustment filter, dual tone filters, hologram if needed, that have animate option. You can just apply the thing. Interesting. What are the export options? That is a pretty good question. We have image, video, or embed so you could embed the thing directly in your website which is pretty good pretty useful if i just needed that the way that it works is really a tactile interactivity type of interface i would love for this thing to be like on an ipad for me to be able to just touch move shit around and play with it but that doesn't work as expected so option click is zooming out for some reason and yeah that's weird in terms of rendering and all of that. The speed at which you can have effects and previews and 3D elements, it's nice. I'm going to go back into the dashboard and create an empty, either I'm creating an empty or we go take a look at the other options. I know that these ones were pretty interesting. That is really simple, even simple to achieve in terms of Figma rendering. What I'm feeling, and also I haven't checked everything, but what I'm feeling far 
it, that the only interactivity that we have are 3D tilt and mouse follow for now. Going back to the interface of the empty state, first time I'm putting the thing when I don't have anything set up in that page, I'm getting tutorials. We needed that in the front page, but we didn't. So now we have that here. We also have the ability to say, add some text or add 3D shapes. That's pretty good. This thing has a massive misalignment. That's not good. Okay. So they say you can add a 3D shape as a default thing. So I did that, but that's interesting. It it has some spline vibes, yes, but also no, the shape is here. I like that going back to studio, which is another framer competitor type of thing, which is really good. Things are immediate and I love that. I've been loving that since I've seen it and I wish like other tools did that. This is a WebJL base tool as a starting point. So that kind of makes sense. Let's use this thing for some reason. I don't know. I wish there was an option to do random a refraction, cool dispersion, cool, but then I need the type. Roughness doesn't really change shit as far as I can tell it does but also it's moving the content so it's similar light we have the same thing as our like 3d tools thingy let's see I was looking for glass I think this is how you do glass probably it's going to be not so opaque but kind of, I really like the interface with the circular zone to define the elements that you are supposed to interact with. I enjoy that. It's not necessarily good, but it's interesting. It's my background for some reason. I wish there was an option to scatter better way. Like right now, the only thing that I did is a repeat 3D with a spacing of 50%, but I would love to have that with a repeat 3D random could be really interesting. Though, let me just add a text layer right here. This is a text that makes sense. Let's put that in, in pure white. It's inter by default. So that's we fine with. They don't give you the ability to go further than 100 on the range slider, but you can still do that by using your keyboard. So that's fun. Can I write my own code in there? I don't think you can. I No, no, I don't think you can. Though this is really interesting. If I do mouse tracking, oh, that's crazy. Mouse tracking at percent. You're right, the refraction is crazy. This one is broken when it's here. I don't really mind, but it's interesting to see how they behave. Nonetheless, this is neat. This is my tilt axis, meaning that I can just have it in a slow pace as an option. It could also track or be tracked tracking my cursor at the same time as rendering the thing. So that's interesting. As I said earlier, I think the only option that you have are going to be track mouse and axis, 3D axis tilt, which kind of makes sense. But yeah, in the effect though, <laughs> <laughs> feel like there is a ton of things similar to, as you said earlier, similar as the modify options that we have that will give the user the ability to do weird ass shit like that. And technically, if I place it underneath, it will just affect my, my text, not my spheres. But then if I place it above, I'm interacting with the entire page. So that could be really cool if you have a, an harvest state to be added to a card or something. I wish we could shift select multiple things to group them together and just affect something. But I think it's just a hierarchy of layers type of situation. So that's interesting. Let's see the other one. We have a lot of distortion. We have a lot of blurs, which I think the progressive blur was one of the options that I wanted to check. The God's Ray are also like 100% a thing that we'd like to see. That's neat. Pretty simple. Like the powers of WebJL to be able to create something like this in three clicks. That's crazy. Mirror and then custom. So you can technically, yes, you can type your code if you know WebJL. I'm guessing these are shaders kind of thing. Seems like a pretty, pretty simple thing. Apparently it does something, but it's too strong. Chris, hi, welcome on in. You didn't get the notification. I'm sorry about that. Hope you're good. Hope your day's going great. I wish I could get the fuck out of this though. That would be an appreciated thing. I can't click on anything apparently once I'm here. So that's 
Good. Nope. Escape doesn't do shit. I had the button right there. Okay, cool. So the custom thing, apparently you have to click on the code icon that changed your UI to get rid of that. You need to go back here, which I'm guessing you should or they should give you the ability to extend or edit your code or your pre-selected things. Because even though this one is a custom thing, it will take from the basic that they already have, which are based on what we know. That's a one pixel by one pixel type of situation. Yeah, I don't know what happens, but something happens. Anywho, so yeah, I could potentially see the thing that the the effect, the shaders, I will call that the shaders, even though they call that filters, but the same thing are not necessarily in there. Though, going back to, I think it's the best comparison that we have is modify for now. And I do think that once again, this tool being really impressive in terms of what it can do and what I can do with it doesn't really give me any options as a designer to generate anything. Like it's really cool if you need to have a core cool hero section on your landing page. Other than that, that's about it. I don't see how you would create an entire website with this properly. You don't really have the ability to create a link or to have an on-click action. So it's mainly going to be for interactive elements that needs to happen in the background or in other places. So that stuff like this will be useful. But other than that's just a hero section. That's pretty interesting what they did here. So they have the opaqueness at 0% and then the friend at 46 to get that. Yeah, highlight and speculate makes sense. Though... The dispersion is this thing. Cool. And it was a certain level that I didn't check. Interesting. That's pretty nice. But yeah, other than that, I do think that a Unicorn Studio can be useful if you need to render something as a effect base section of your website and then embed that thing. Though, do not know how me would use it, mainly because I don't know how I can add from here. I don't know how I can insert a 3D element anymore. I'm here, add a 3D things in the beginning, I needed to click on add a 3D element, but now I'm fucked and I would love to know if I could load my own, like a custom OBJ file, but apparently I can't. So that is limiting other than that. And the multi selection would be appreciated for me. I like the navigation sphere circles because it reminds me of some touch panels controls that I used to have, though there are things going back to what we've seen on last week's experiment, which was Dora Run says that they have a really 3D based stuff that doesn't have a 3D editor. The editor that we have here is limiting you, but giving you enough options to do stuff. So that is pretty interesting. I think like the axis, for example, could have been a bit better integrated with a 3D axis thing that people know about and how it's supposed to work, all that. But that's debatable. Overall, really good. That's, I'm going to say that's going to be a really fast overview, similarly to modify last time, because I can't really see much of the thing that we need to or could do. It took me a week and a half to get access. So if you request it now, you may have quick access. I didn't talk to them. I didn't have any interaction with the creators. So there is no priority access because I'm a streamer that does thing and review tools, I think. So a week and a half is pretty, it's pretty good. It's also a very limited or new platform. So that makes sense. Overall, I think it's a really cool app. I think it has potential to give you interactive banners. Once again, if you have like ads or if you have hero header sections that needs a bit more fun, this is a pretty pretty useful tool and it's really simple to grasp overall you can't really go wrong with it not all of the controls makes the most sense but still still pretty good that's about it bye see you next time